Hello, and welcome to Up Close and Personal with Analia Benz. I'm your host, Helene Lipson. For our listeners not yet acquainted with Analia, she was born in Chile and entered this world directly from source energy without any karmic debt. And she came into this life with a sense of knowingness on a pure mission. Her soul's purpose is to raise the vibrational level of the planet to a critical point that will allow a transitioning into the new paradigm, the new level of awareness for everything, for the planet and everything in it, every rock, every insect, every person. And to do that job, Anelia is a spiritual catalyst, awakening those asleep helping those already aware to reach a higher vibrational level. And she's even traveled to different geographical areas in various ways for the sake of cleansing it so that the vibration can come through properly. Meditation has been an integral part of Anelia's connection with source energy. Today, on Up Close and Personal with Analia Benz, we will talk about Analia's meditation practice and learn more about how meditation can help each and every one of us gain clarity in our own lives. Hello, Analia. Hi. How are you today? Great, thank you. Wonderful. So we're going to talk a little bit about meditation. And in a previous episode, we talked a little bit about how meditation was included in your day-to-day life. But I'd like to hear a little bit more about your meditation rituals. Yeah, the, there's not really much of a ritual. I will meditate whenever I can. Um, sometimes my day often will start around five o'clock in the morning, but um, if I'm working uh, during the night, I, it won't start until about 10 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. So to have a, like a regular type of meditation is not really part of my reality. Although we do have um, a scheduled meditation for Wednesday mornings at 8.30 a.m., Pacific time zone. So if you'd like to join us for that, that'll be very, very good. (laughs) It's a narrow meditation there that we do as an intention to join around the planet. Um, So basically, I try to, um, my my sense of um, meditation would be to sit um, in a meditative silent state for as long as I can during the day. Half an hour is not really enough for me personally. Um, I try to do, I not, don't try, but um, I try to fit in because without it, I feel a bit off, off, a little bit off <laughs> at an energetic level um, for at least an hour, if not more, during the day. Um, I know when I'm running or I haven't done enough, when I start going into an altered state during my daily um, activities and of course if you're um, a parent and you have to drive your kids around and you have to do the shopping and cooking or go to work um, in an office or whatever going into an altered state while you're doing those things is not very efficient (laughs) right Um, uh, it's it's you know like when you're driving and you start going into an altered state you can do it but you have to have um, a foot in it, each kind of world. Um, some, because the, the real or what we might call the real world is so transparent and it's so pliable, it's so fluid that sometimes it's difficult to know what's on it. And driving, that's why it can become a bit dangerous mm-hmm. if um, other people, you know, cars and things... Um, being in touch with them and being in an altered state at the same time is kind of hard. So yeah, I have to dedicate a few hours a day to just sit in meditation. Um, and whether I do it during the night or whether I do it first thing in the morning or during the evening, or I have to take time out during the day to do it because I'm, I feel myself going into it. Um, we really all benefit from doing at least 20 minutes of meditation silent meditation per day and often I will talk to people and say you know um, you want to 
expand your awareness, then spend at least 20 minutes a day on a silent meditation and go, oh, I can't do it. I've tried, I've tried everything and I can't do it. Um, and that's a block, it's like a firewall block that I can't do emotion. And I would say, well, do the firewall exercise on it and then try again. And then ex go out and uh, educate yourself on different methods of how to do a silent meditation. There's so many out there, so many. Try them all, try it, but try and don't give up because even sitting and trying to meditate is actually beneficial for the person. It expands one awareness, which is the key uh, thing here, right? I think, Anelia, though, a lot of people, I don't, sometimes it is a firewall that's blocking them. Other times they just simply don't know what the process is and how to get to that state. They view it as some kind of complex procedure that other people do that they don't think that they can do. I know sometimes um, people use music, some people don't use music. How do you get into a deepened state? Obviously you're sitting and you're silent. So yes, definitely sitting because if you lie down, you're going to fall asleep. Okay. <laughs> Um, unless you want, you, you know how to do the meditation where you put the body to sleep, um, then you want to be lying down and covered because your body will get cold. Um, but if you want to do like a regular meditation, sit down, a very comfortable sit position with your with your back straight, your chin slightly down so that your lower your back and your neck relaxes, and um, palms up on on your lap. And then the easiest one that I know is to start feeling the air going in and out of one's body, either through the mouth or the, the nostrils. You feel the air going in and out and just focus on the air going in and out. Feel it, feel it. And you, before you know it, the 20 minutes are up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Anelia... I swim laps every day, and um, sometimes when I'm swimming and underwater and in some kind of rhythmic groove, I feel like I'm in a meditative state. And I spoke to a friend of mine also who jogs, and she was saying that sometimes when she's jogging, she hits that state. Is that meditation? That's an altered state that's been in the zone and is very close to the state of meditation or could be considered a state of meditation. Um, and it's extremely healthy. It's a really good place to go. Um, you can have that, say, playing golf, for example. Many people who play golf will go into that state. And I would encourage, if you do like to do some sort of physical activity, to go in and do that and go into the zone you know people call it the zone <laughs> mm -hmm. it's it's very good yes it's a type of meditation it's not silent meditation but it is a type of meditation that is extremely healthy very very good yeah yeah I'm almost addicted to that feeling which makes me want to swim every day now what about music a lot of people use music to enter a deeper state I don't personally, I've tried, I was doing an experiment using uh, some of the Monroe Institute music that they teach, uh, that they have in downloads to go into altered states. But for me, it was extremely distracting. <laughs> mm -hmm. I couldn't, I, I couldn't use them. I couldn't use it. I've, um, and sounds as well. There's, uh, they have uh, like rain and sea and different nature sounds to, uh, combined with their technology to help the person go into an altered state. I haven't tried those yet. I haven't started them. But yeah, I mean, I like I always mention, I try things myself before I will say to others, yeah, this is going to help you. All right. So for me, the sounds didn't help, but I know and I've been told by other people that the music that they create, this is the Monroe Institute, does help them tremendously to go into the alter state. And so if it works for so many people, I would say try it out. Other people have, um, you know, like different um, projects. There's loads of CDs out there with very uh, meditative music and things. And I would say try them. If your mind is going nuts or something, then try the music. Maybe that's going to help you. It's about, it's, I would say it's a, very similar to listening, for example, to one's breath or 
feeling the breath and um so yeah try it try it and people who compose music will go often into an altered state people who paint and our artists will go into that altered state so yeah there's many many activities that we can do that will help us to go into that altered state interesting and what is that the theta state as far as consciousness right right yeah yeah interesting so Anelia, how specifically can meditation help people on a day-to-day -day basis as far as becoming more clear and as far as having an overall calmness in their day-to-day -day life? Well, you know, meditation has been proven even by scientists these days to lower stress, to um, promote healing, you know, people who have had surgeries and then are taught meditation meditation and they meditate every day after their surgery they heal so much faster than those who haven't and um they also it also expands one's awareness meditation definitely does that it moves us out of time space right it moves us out of time space and one of the other things that i've been asking people to do these days is one to daydream for an hour a day if they can and also to do nothing for an hour a day. If you don't know how to meditate and you have had a really rough time trying to learn, do nothing for one hour today. That's what I would suggest. Doing nothing is actually really hard to do when mm -hmm. one is busy because even as we sit down to do nothing, we start planning our shopping list or what we have to do today. And whenever those things come in, just say, uh, thank you, but I'm doing nothing right now. And just sit and get bored get bored allow yourself to be bored allow yourself to be anxious or thinking that you have to move or do other things allow yourself to feel all those things for an hour and just do nothing absolutely nothing <laughs> and is this how you communicate with spirit is this how you get messages when you're meditating uh, there, those are two different things because when I have, when I'm in the middle of my meditation, that's all I do. I'm meditating. However, before or after my meditation, I can have an intention to communicate, or sometimes source energy will come through very strongly when I'm done because that's the state where I'm most um, open to it. There's nothing distracting me, so in information can come through very quickly and you know get there very, very, very efficiently. <laughs> hmm. And I want to hear a little bit about the power of group meditation. So I know that you were describing that on Wednesdays, uh, you have a group meditation where people will meditate and have the same intent in order to facilitate that notion. I want to hear a little bit more about the power of group meditation. Yes, group meditation is extremely powerful. Even if you have two people meditating at the same time, um, with a joint intention, because you can have, you know, when you go into a meditative state, how does it feel? Um, it's becoming aware and existing without the mental noise, I would say. So you, you're aware of everything that's happening. You, you become your environment. You become the world, the universe. And um, you're no longer thinking about it. <laughs> so you're no longer getting separate from it. Excellent. Anelia, on a closing note, is there anything that you would like to add about meditation, your meditation process, or anything about how it can help our listeners at home? Um, anybody can go into meditative state um, if they have the intention and then they find themselves and become empowered, you know, do the research and find the method that works for you. Um, on the tools tab on the ascension101.com site you will find a five minute meditation exercise now that's not really enough you should really do at least 20 minutes a day but if that's all you can do that's better than nothing mm -hmm. and that's right there you can click on it and listen to it and do it thank you so much this has been extremely helpful and special thanks to all of our listeners for tuning in to Up Close and Personal with Anelia Benz Till we meet again, love, light, and blessings to all. Namaste.